Okay, it's an amazing environment. Today, I'm going to teach you how to paint. <laughs> Believe me, all of us are going to learn how to paint. But the first thing you should know is to have a clear idea why you want to paint. This is one of the biggest challenge for a painter because some don't have any idea what to paint. It's totally white. So when they have an idea, they think, okay, I'm going to paint this. But what is the purpose of this? Just to enjoy it? Or I want to impact the world, right? So when they have this idea, the next step is even harder. I do have the skill to do it. No, I don't think so. No. My nephew is an artist. I'm not good on that. So probably no, it's not mine. I won't do it. This is the big challenge because most of people think that they are not going to make it. With some, but they think, oh, I can make it. Yeah, I'm good. I can make it. The next step is even more challenging. You know what it is? To know the art supply. Ton of rushes, ton more styles, ton of styles, oil, watercolor, acrylic, pencils, color pencils, tons of styles, and they get dizzy. No, it is too much. And then, when they know about all these tools, okay, time to do it. Okay, just few, of them, few of them are very sure they need to make it. And the next step is layers. Because what is layer? What is a layer in, in a painting? When I do a painting, the first step is to draw. Super quick. I shouldn't be worried about details at all. No details. I mean, the next layer is to add colors. Remember, no details. Just rough, rough colors everywhere. The next step is still adding more colors, a little bit more. But remember, no details, only at the end. So some people don't realize that there are a lot of layers, not only one, two, or three, sometimes 10 or more. Some of those artists, they get discouraged. I don't like this painting. I don't like it. So they have two options. Or I delete it, no, three options, three options. Or I delete it, or Hmm, in this stain, I can create new elements. Okay, I can do it. Some that they're mad, no, I'm going to throw it away. I'm not, I'm not going to make it. I'm going to throw it away because those stains is not what I wanted. I have in my mind this idea about the painting, but they don't see it in this, a lot of colors. But those people, those, like, a few percentage of them, that they decided to create from those stains new elements, they go further and they create even an art piece better than they saw in the beginning. Just because those mistakes that they saw, they did it, they weren't mistakes. They were stains that give them to have new ideas, new elements to improve the initial idea about the art piece. In our life, let me share a little bit what happened when I was two years old. I don't remember. And I need to talk about my mom. She is my hero. What happened, she told me that when I was two years old, I went out from the house I went out and my mom saw me that I was playing around a fire with some little friends. And she saw me that I fell into the fire and my hands, both hands, were in fire. Totally, totally in fire. My mom saw and she tried to help me and she saw that my hands were severely burned. I couldn't open my left hand, my left hand and I was left-handed. So I couldn't open this hand. This hand was totally burned with a lot of scars. And then it took several years to recover a little bit. And the doctor told my mom 
that I'm going to have a scar for my whole life in my hands. So when I was in the school, I was so afraid, so ashamed to be seen with these big marks and scars in my hands. And I used to have them in my pocket. I was so ashamed. I became super, super shy, and I started to feel that I was less than other friends. I couldn't go out when I was in the school. I couldn't go out to play with my friends. In the recess, I preferred to be in the, in the classroom. Drawing is what I did. I can say that for me, drawing was my first language. And then I realized that I was doing good, but at, at least is what my mom told me. My mom told me, John, you're good in this. I think you should keep going, doing this art. And she made me believe, she made me believe that I was going to be a good artist. But I do believe after many years now, I do believe that probably I'm not a good artist because most of artists, they are more introverted. They don't do anything about marketing, they don't do anything about business, they're just happy in the room drawing. But I'm not like that. I, I love the gym, I love being super social, I love to have a lot of friends, super social. I love business, I love all this kind of stuff. Probably my nature wasn't to be an artist. My, my mom made me believe that I was going to be a good artist and I kept going. And I started to have a lot of friends drawing. Even I remember that I used to make a lot of cartoons of my teachers, of all the friends, and I became more popular, more popular. And then I was sitting with the popular guys all the time because they wanted me to make cartoons about the girl, about the other guy, about the teacher, and they laughed the whole time. So I was in that way, and I became confident about this talent, little by little. So during my whole life, oh, but there is something that I forgot to tell you. This accident made a huge emotional impact in me, not only physical, even emotional, because I couldn't speak. I stuttered for my whole life. I couldn't speak at all. I couldn't. So when I used to have the, t the chance to speak in front of my little friends, I couldn't. I remember my, my legs were trembling. I couldn't, shaking all the time. So when I was a teenager, I made a decision. I said, what I know, I know to paint. I think I should go in that path. OK, I'm going to make it. I have some ideas. But at the same time, I couldn't speak. So I remember when I was working out, running, running, miles and miles, I used to have images about myself in the future. I saw myself talking and encouraging people how to improve their life. I had images about myself traveling around the world, doing art exhibit. All those images in my mind went through and they became true, all of them. I had a chance to live in several countries in South America and in Europe. I had a chance to learn English and French. So when I came here to the US five years ago, I was a headache because nobody understood me because my accent was Frenchy, <laughs> British English, and Spanish accent. <laughs> so it was crazy because everybody was asking me, say it again, say it again. But after years, some people still listen that I still have some accent. But the thing after this is, I made a career that probably wasn't for me. Wasn't for me. So when I had in my life this huge accident, it was like those mistakes in the painting. I had two options or threw away myself, threw it away like, I don't have any opportunity in my life. I think I should just get a job and no, I won't try. Or according to those things in my life, those accidents in my life that I didn't expect it, I can use those mistakes to make a better art piece. And then, it's not only that. 
when I decided to become a painter, which is not good for many parents, which is not good for some people that you love, because they think, oh, you're going to be an artist, or oh, you're going to be starving, right? So I wanted to paint paintings that can impact the world. And I started to have goals in my life. And then this big idea about painting a piece of art was to help people even after my own death. Because this life is too short. Sometimes when we are in emotional situations, we feel like it never ends, never ends. It's so painful that it never ends. But no, this life is totally short. The most important job that we can do in our world is to impact people after my own life. I have many good references about good writers, good artists, people in the past who they left the legacy. And we still are learning about their life. They, are, they inspire us how to live our life and to help people. This is why I paint, because I do believe that my legacy can live after my own life. Thank you.